everybody. This is your host, Huge Pop, the Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast. Today with me is my buddy, Reek Reek. Rico, how you doing, my man? Oh, love and life. Love and life, man. Tonight, we are here to promote Extreme Impact Wrestling, XIW out of Panama City Beach, Florida. There's an event that's going to happen on April 20th. It's this Saturday at a new location. And um, I'll let these guys tell you the new location. But to start it off, as we got in the bottom here, we he started out training in college at 2000. In 2004, 2005, he has held multiple championships across the Gulf. He's wrestled with NWA World's Heavyweight Champion against Jax Dane. He's been on AEW and TNA. It's Christian Blake. How you doing, my friend? Doing great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. And next door to him is our second guest. You see him in action. Face the you face him as an opponent. You re realize that he is no gimmick. He is the experience. He has put the real fight shit into Extreme Impact Wrestling. He's a former AIWF champion. He is the unpredictable one. He is Damian Wayne. How you doing, my friend? You're doing good, guys, man. Pleasure, pleasure to be here with all y'all. Pleasure to be with you. I haven't seen you in a, since December. I'm getting excited to see you on Saturday. Uh, um, it was a fun time with all you guys at Extreme Impact Wrestling. So, um, Rico, do you have anything to open up the show? Ask, want to ask these guys? You never met these guys, so. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> I just want to get to know a little bit about the background, both of you guys, man. Let's we'll start with you, Christian. Like, when did you start off wrestling? Uh, I started training in about 2005, 2006. Uh, debuted in the fall of 2006. And uh, from there, it was kind of like ups and downs. Uh, I, I want to say finally I got that traction in about 2012. And uh, started going around the Gulf Coast, man, you know, getting my ring work in and all that, meeting a lot of people, a lot of great guys uh, to learn from along the way. Uh, guys like Roddy Mack, uh, John Saxon, Steve Anthony. I mean, a whole load of all the, you know, best kept secrets of the South in my time so far. There you go. Probably got some crazy road stories, man. Yeah, you you learn more about this crazy profession on the road than you do inside the ring. So Damien over here, he travels with his wife. His wife travels with him all the time, so I don't think I know crazy road stories with you, huh? Uh, that's just up to recently, but <laughs> I can write a book with. I can write a book about the stories. So, um. I was going to ask David where he started off at. Man. Oh, man, I, uh, I started off in uh, Virginia uh, at the ripe old age of 30 years old. Uh, I took the leap. Uh, uh, I was just wanting to get into business as a uh, you know, ref, a ring crew. Man, I never even met. I mean, staying in wrestling since I was seven years old. First live event I went to was in 1978. And uh, so I was, like I said, 30 years old, 166 pounds, never even thought I was going to be a wrestler. So when that, uh, when, when that happened, uh, you know, phew, dream came true. So I was happy with that until uh, my name started kind of getting talked about more in the Mid-Atlantic area. So I was like, well, I guess people think I'm some kind of somewhat good so I, I guess i should start traveling so that's when i just started traveling uh, uh you know like you said earlier that uh uh wife being with me all the time but early in my career it was probably 95 percent me myself and i man that was just me going and going and hustling and hustling pouring myself out to anybody that would book me and just learning everything i could learn good bad the ugly um, I was blessed, you know, I was blessed to, to experience true kayfabe and, uh, once the secret was broke, the favorites became people who could still make me believe. And to this day, my top five is Tully Blanchard, uh, Barry Wyndham, Rick Rude, Jake Roberts, Terry Funk. And I got to learn something from every one of them, except for Rick Lee when I, once I got in the business. I got to train with Tully. Uh, got uh, Barry Wyndham was a couple of my uh, match agents for WWE. Um, 
like I said, Rude, I never got to meet. Jake Roberts, I uh, traveled the roads with Baby Dawn, which was Jake Roberts' sister, uh, sister-in-law, sister so I got to pick his brain quite a bit. And Terry Funk, I was around him quite a bit when when I was kind of hanging out with Manny Fernandez, who's my number six favorite of all time. So I got to learn from both of them. Basically top six, I got to learn something from all of them, but Rick Rude, so I'm pretty blessed. Uh, wow. Extremely blessed. <laughs> With my my career, man, I definitely can't complain about anything that's ever happened. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. That's a good lineup right there. That's a great Absolutely. lineup. Learn from the best. And now, if once you see this, check it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna be live at the XIW uh, Extreme Place on Saturday. Go on. His style is something else. His style is he's. I'll be honest. He's brutal. It's you better have your a game on, Christian, because if you don't. It's, well, it's, it's over. Me and Christian, we uh, we went at it in Louisiana. Oh, the All pro right, wrestling two two five. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, from Baton Rouge. Yep. So you I think know, he knows what I'm. I think he knows what I'm all about already. Yeah. So, um, yeah. how would you describe your wrestling style and your and your persona? Is it something that um. Where'd Sorry about that, guys. All right, no, that's good. How'd you? Where'd you? Where'd you come up with your style, uh, Christian? Is it? Uh, was it something you developed on your own, or was it through your experiences in NWA, WWE, AEW? How about that? How's that? It. It, it was mostly uh, just becoming a fan of um, like New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I guess like the, around 2010. Um, I don't know. Like you know, you, you want to be different. You know, like I've, I've heard the term of less than, greater than, different than, and, and that's something that I felt like I needed to do at the time was find ways of standing out, you know, not just the appearance, but like the style, especially in Louisiana at the time, you know, you, you still have that old school, you still had that, um, that believability. Huh? But in order for me, it was it was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go and adapt to something that they haven't seen. So, you know, I, I portray, and I like to, you know, I kind of created, in my mind, the moniker of Cajun Strong Style. Okay. You know, because when I go in the ring, I bring that extra spice to everything that I deliver. And... uh that's just how I feel that I present, you know, uh, ground and pound, you know, and then I, I'll do some flashy stuff here and there if it's necessary. Um, but all in all, that's that's where I base off my style from okay. was from watching New Japan around that time. Now, does it matter what opponent you, you face, whether it's anybody before April 20th or Mr. Damian Wayne on the 20th? Are you preparing any any different for him, or is it just the same every day? What's is what you do? Well, the first thing I I like to think is you know you know when I ask anybody that I come face to face with is you know what's what's their tolerance of pain, you know. Uh, like I said, like I, I like when there's different styles that clash. I think it it tells a different story um very challenging but uh you know like i said i i faced across the ring with him before and i'm familiar with what he can deliver so come this weekend i think i'll be more prepared for damian wayne more than i was before so damian how do you prepare is there your style of you when you prepare, say you prepare for a Vordell Walker compared to a Christian Blake, is there any difference in how you're going to prepare for this young man over here? Everybody's the same to me. Everybody's the same. Just wants to bring <laughs> the pain. That's Everybody's That's just when when it comes to throwing knucks and 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 real fight shit. Everybody's the same. I don't care how big you are, how tall you are, <laughs> and they're all the same. Does anybody? There's want no. To but there's no preparing when you're just ready to get in there and throw nuts, man. That's just yeah. that's just how it goes. All right. So what was the outcome of your first time you guys faced each other? I think he got me. 
Oh, I got him good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Lift on a banana peel right there. Uh, <laughs> Didn't see it coming. Is that back? Is that in the back of your mind, Damien? Oh, always. Always. So always. Got, you got, got a little too game? zealous on me. Are you coming up with a different game plan, Christian, or are you staying with the same one? Well, well, well he says he's he's better prepared for Damian Wayne, but how can you prepare for something that's unpredictable? No, that's what I'm saying. That, yeah, that's true. Uh, Christian, I mean, he's unpredictable. Every time I see this man, it's something different. I know you guys faced each other a couple of years ago, but are you are you really prepared for what you're going to get? The, the, the real fight shit you're going to get at the uh, Extreme Impact Wrestling. They don't call me the game changer for nothing. Game changer, huh? Okay. All right. I mean, I got to ask, I mean, is uh, from that match between you and Damien, is there any memorable moment other than the victory? For me, I just know it was a hard hit match. I know he brings it. That's that's all I that's, ask is, is yeah. bring me the fight, man. Fight me back. And I and he, he had no problem doing that. I'll give him that. Right. All right. So David, do you have any like anything get yourself ready for a match? It's like up or get ready? No, nah, nah, man. It's like uh Right after WrestleMania, man, I saw a bunch of people posting, uh, if you didn't watch WrestleMania and come out more determined or more blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, if you need something like WrestleMania to do that to you, you're in the wrong business. Uh, the passion I have for this business, I'm up for every match. There, I, I don't need no WrestleMania or a big moment on TV wrestling or some Cody Rhodes finishes. I don't need none of that to motivate me. I'm in this business because I love it. I'm in this business because I uh, I love to to fight. I love to get in front of the people and put on a show. You know, I, I don't need somebody else's happenings to make me motivated. So, nah, man, I don't getting prepared for a match. That's that's the easy part, man. That's the easy part. I'm prepared every every night. I don't feel like I never I never overlook opponents. I never take anything lightly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so I'm ready to go 100 every time. There's nothing I need to get prepared for. It's uh, I know I'm gonna get hit and I'm gonna hit back. That's all it is to me. And I can bring up the speed a little bit, Rico. Um, I think he announced his retirement back in 2023. He's still sitting right in front of us. He can't. He's, he, that's how much he loves the business. If I, if I can be honest, that's how much he loves the business. So this guy's a sick individual. I mean, retire that he can't. He needs more, and I. That's my concern for you, Christian. He needs hey, more, and the, the um, more is you. Being 52 years old and still going balls to the wall doesn't tell you how much I love this business. I don't know what else. That's it. Dedication. It is. So, do you need a WrestleMania moment, Christian, to keep you motivated? Or do you? Just I, I just need the first beat of my song and the bell to ring, and I'm good to go, baby. All right. Awesome, man. So, fans, fans, what are, what do fans mean to you, Chris? I know what fans mean to Mr. Damian Wayne, but what do fans mean to you? To me, I. I just like to share moments. That's the, the last few years that's been the biggest thing for me is okay. sharing a moment with all them from their reactions, their their investment, you know. Um, I appreciate them entirely. You know, if it wasn't for them, then I probably wouldn't be doing this right now, sitting down doing a podcast, you know, uh, talking about wrestling, talking about a show coming up. You know, um, I'm very grateful for them. Very. So other than XIW, Damien, what are you done doing to keep yourself in shape and busy? I know I see you all over the Internet. You're doing stuff with uh, some stuff in the Mid-South. And you were, I think you got a, a match or had a match last week or something like that. How you been keeping yourself uh, busy? Well, uh, my stuff now is is picking and choosing. Um, um it's uh, 
special places like uh, when I go to Ozark Mountain Wrestling out there in Arkansas, it's literally 10 minutes from my son and granddaughter. So I get to see them. Um, Panama City, me and me and Larry, me and Whisper, you know, we go back from the times we, we broke in and I was in the backyard with Jackson when he was 10 years old. And so, you know, that's a book that I kept. And plus my wife's best friend moved down there. So it allows her to see her. And bucket list stuff. Like last night, I got to work Ray Fury, who was a bucket list on me. You know, wow. Much respect to him. He, I, I mark out over his froggy bow, his top of elbow. You know, anybody that's got a beautiful elbow, I mark out over his shit. I, I think I got the best of the business, but I won't hesitate to mark out over somebody else's. But uh, so, you know, stuff like that, man. So, uh, you know, I keep myself busy with that. And, uh, so it's not as busy as I used to be, but it's it's enough to keep the, uh, the itch scratched. What about you, um, Christian? You got, how do you keep yourself busy? Uh, actually, this past weekend, uh I had wrestled in, uh, in Baton Rouge area for a Pro Wrestling 225 Heavyweight Championship match and an SEC title match. Uh, it was title versus title. Uh, for the last month and a half, prepared for that one. Um, tear the roof off. Uh, basically, just, man, just staying in the gym all week, too, you know. Uh, I'm actually uh, a place called Iron House. With a buddy of mine who's he's a personal trainer so uh the last three months you know been picking his brain trying to get my eating habits right uh just trying to get that conditioning back because i mean i'm close to where damien's at right now when it comes to age you know i'm, I'm catching up with him so i gotta <laughs> stay on my toes rico would you guys agree that stamina really plays a big part in your wrestling, you got it. Oh, have yeah, it. it does. Oh, yeah. I was like, just talking to somebody the uh, the other day and told them, man, it, I can go out there sometimes and go 30 minutes and almost feel like I didn't break yeah. a sweat. And then there's times I'll go out there for 10 minutes and I feel like I'm gonna keep my, my guts out. <laughs> it just man, the atmosphere, the the, the it's, adrenaline. I mean, there's so many. You can go out there and think you're in the best shape of your life, and then all of a sudden, man, just the butterflies, the adrenaline, just everything kicks in, and all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> so, yeah, man, that, that's that's probably the most important, well, I'd say 1B, one 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 a with uh, strength, just so you can protect each other in there, but strength and conditioning man i don't care what you look like i don't care any of that crap if you could protect me and you got conditioning to be able to protect me then i'm all for you getting into business so you can be like, 300 like, pounds and look like dusty roads or you can be lex Luger. yeah a lot a lot of it's like you know when people uh like they ask about it and like i'll tell them Regular cardio is different than ring cardio. Trust me. <laughs> ring conditioning is totally different. <laughs> totally, totally different. And you, and you, you mentioned this. You made a statement, Damien, about um, protecting each other. At the end of the day, you guys are competitors. But in the end, but at the end of the day, really, you got to have to be that brotherhood where you can trust one another. To when you guys are throwing punches and you're throwing each other, you're going to protect each other so something serious doesn't happen. Is that what you're basically speaking about, Damon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm going in there and making it as real as I can possibly make it without hurting each other. And it's, it's easily done if you know how to work. And um, it's, uh, man. And it seems like a lot lately, and even on TV, just guys being so unsafe, and especially bigger guys getting in there with these smaller guys and tossing them around. And I mean, there there is an art to this. There is a way to do this without just 
you know, carelessness. And it seems like that's like the big thing now is just being careless. And I'm like, I mean, I cringe at a lot of stuff I see. I'm just like, he didn't protect him at all. He didn't do anything. And I just don't get it, man. But I, I don't want that over my, I can honestly say in 21 years, other, other than little things here and there, I have never injured a soul. And I want to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We all got families to go back home to, you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and mouths to feed. So we want to make sure everyone goes back in one piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, that's, that's the safety, man. Got to have safety. I, was I mean, gonna... Scott's seen me and me and Vordell can make it look like two two Mack trucks colliding. <laughs> but... you have, dude, I, I tell this story all the time. Back two years ago with my first experience at Extreme Impact Wrestling. I have this chair right here that came from the first XIW event that I went to. And you guys fooled the hell out of me because that, what you guys, you you and Vordell, you and Jackson Slade, you and I can name a bunch of guys that I've seen Damian Wayne face. And I'm a, I'm a believer. I, I, you're sitting right there first and second row and it's just like, bam, bam. And they're hitting, I mean, it's just unreal. And I'm like, so yes. Believable, but yes, I agree with you, Damon. You know how to do it, and you protect your person so they don't get hurt. But it's well, I just, I just know for me personally that I told myself when I started training that I was not going to have fans sitting in the crowd saying my shit look weak or look fake. If, if if all if all I had to do, which which. That's all I do now. I mean, all I do is kick, punch, and cheat. <laughs> I don't do nothing. <laughs> but if that's all I had to do to be real, that's, that's, that's what makes me different now. Back in the day, you had 12 workers and two spot monkeys on the show. Now you got two workers and 12 spot monkeys. So me being the brawling old school whatever you want to call it, I, I'm different. That's what makes me different now from right. on the show. You're going to get different when I come out there. You're not going to get these 20 reversals and finally hit some kind of move. You're not going to get that. Uh, I want my shit looking raw. I want, I want it to look legit. I want it to look like a fight. I want it to look like a struggle. I want it to look like a competition. I want it to look like both guys are trying to win the freaking match. So that's that's what I enjoy is is now now I am the different one. You ready for the different one, Christian? Me and him think much alike on that, but you know, uh, my my opinion is about the same when it comes to that. Um, but I yeah, this is gonna be uh, a hard hitting match. Great match. You ready to get hit? Are you ready to be hit by one of them chairs, one of them fists? So I'm just I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Um Damien, if you had any advice, if you had one thing that you wanted you would advise your opponent for uh April 20th, what would that be? Advise him about me? Yeah. Why would I give that away? That's why I'm predictable. <laughs> I love it. All right, here we go. Christian, do you have any advice for Damian Wayne on the for, for on the twentieth? <sighs> Me giving him advice? Uh well, I tell you what, I don't expect driving seven to eight hours over there for less than what you can get. That I can tell you that. And I don't plan on driving back eight hours empty-handed with all due respect. Well, you might have a beer in your hand, but that's that, you know, <laughs> that'll be that about be it. That'd be it, huh? <laughs> that'll about be it. So is there a title on the line? 
Yeah, the AIWF Florida Regional title will be on the line. I don't, I, I don't want to start anything, but I don't think. I, I yes, he does. I, I haven't met you personally, Christian, but I don't know if that title's going back to Louisiana or wherever or wherever it's going to go because I, you better be coming. You better come with your A game and a bunch of other stuff. But it's going to be a battle. Are you prepared for the battle it's going to be? Well, I'm prepared. So I got to ask a question. I mean, you mentioned John Saxon, and I, of course, I call John Saxon the puppet master. Uh, yeah, he has he has his little puppets. Jackson He's Slater, a goof. And Vordell Walker and all these. And he he was he entered Chaos in the Cage champions. They left Chaos in the Cage, no champions. Now, does John is John Saxon in your head, and does he have control over what he what's going on? Is he the one that brought you in here? I don't believe that's the reason. I mean, personally, I've known Saxon for years. He's helped me out when I did the grind early on in 2010, 2014. Uh, man, I, I mean, it, it, nothing personal. I mean, it's, to me, it's business, and I stand on that. So I don't think, eh, not too worried about that bubble that's going on. You know, whatever's going on there. I'm not concerned for it. My question was, you dodged the question. My question was, do you have John Saxon in your corner? That's my question. I didn't ask about Dave. I didn't ask about Jackson Slater. I asked, I just expressed. But my question is, are you bringing John Saxon with you? That's my question. Maybe, maybe not. And I got to give you advice. I'm going to give you advice. He went into Chaos in the Cage with two titles and left with none. If you want that man in your corner, that's cool. But you, I mean, Bordell Walker <laughs> tried to take the AWF title and he he lost it, if I remember right. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. I so maybe, maybe, maybe you should ask Saxon if he's going to be out there with me. Well, I, I've, I've tried to get Saxon on the show, but he kind of always prances around here and there. I not know, I can't, yeah, so I I mean, I just have this feeling, Damien. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. You've already been through that once with uh, Bordell Walker and Jackson Slade under John Saxon's uh, Julian or what, a control puppet. You did it once. I mean, is there any concern that John might be sneak, sneaking around the uh, corner there or around the ring? I am worried about that little weasel, man. John, I used to have respect for him. Used to, but he can come out there all he wants, man. I ain't worried about him. Um, I, I'm not worried about John getting in Christian's ear. I, I already know what Christian's going to bring. There's nothing that John can put in Christian's ear that's going to make him bring anything more than what he's already going to bring to the table. And I know what that is, and that's going to be a fight. And that's all I'm asking for. So if John wants to stick his nose in it, so be it. I'll slap that off his face too. I, th I think it would be disrespectful for him to even think about it because I feel like I'm my own man. You know, I I, I don't need someone like him to give me a, a shortcut, especially coming from him where I had to work my butt off to get his praise throughout the years. So, I mean, he knows that shortcuts is not in my blood. So don't I don't him. expect him either. I don't expect him. He shouldn't. But no, you can, yeah, you can no take your own short you can take your shortcuts on your own. Hey, I'm all down for that. I'm I'm dirty. I'll tell you straight in the face. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat. You can cheat all you want. I ain't worried about that. But you don't need John in here because you're good enough on your own, my man. I, and I and no disrespect to you because you are good on your. I've watched some stuff. You are good on your own. I just asked the question because Saxon was or uh, Bordell Walker was good on his own. Jackson Slade was good on his own, but they fell into that uh, that um, trap. And I just you bring your A game. That'd be good. I just was asking. You mentioned John Saxon. That's why I asked that question. Nothing more. <laughs> so it looks like there's a common theme with that. Okay. Yeah. 
I see a pattern there. Pattern? <laughs> what kind of pattern? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you someone, see what he's doing. The pattern is yeah. someone is successful until they got under John Saxon, then they're not successful. That's the pattern. Oh, yeah. If that's what you want to fall into, hey, that's uh, that's good. That's on you, man. So, uh, a couple of topics ago, we were talking about being safe. And um, I don't know if you guys caught this. I think it was on uh, Raw. When um, I'm trying to remember who threw him out, but threw a uh, Tazawa out of the ring, and where you could see, he yes, it, it was Ivar. It was Ivar. 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 And I, yeah. even, I even looked at my, I even looked at my wife and said, "Holy shit, he didn't protect him at all." Yeah, I looked at yeah. my wife. And yeah. said, oh. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Overthrowing. I mean, how hard is it to throw it right, throw the guy right into the guy waiting there to catch him? How do you overthrow? somebody right because they don't care that's why yeah and i was gonna ask you guys ever happen to see that in your promotions where you see somebody just get real careless and oh uh, yeah we, we see it we yeah. see it all the time it, it, mm -hmm. it, it is and and you could tell when it's somebody being careless and you can tell when it's an accident you, you can basically tell all that and I'm, I'll be the first to pull somebody aside and say, hey, man, <laughs> whatever you did out there, it looked cool, but if you can't do it and protect the guy, then you need to stop doing it. Plain, plain and simple, man. But, there was a know. situation at the la at Chaos in the Cage. I um, don't know if Damien remembers it, but um, a, a, an example of protecting each other. Tiger King climbed up to the top of the cage and did that moon that backflip. Everybody was there to protect him and catch him so he wouldn't smash on the, on the floor. It looked cool, but you guys were there to protect them, and that was the part, the important part of it. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't know how many people do that, and then go to jump off, and everybody scatters, and there ain't nobody there to catch you, man. It's like <clears throat> I don't understand what goes through people's minds sometimes when they go out there and just do this shit. I mean. Right. Mm -hmm. um, before we go further into the XIW, because I want to hear your guys' comments, but um. Does anybody, you guys are all familiar with um, WXW uh, office promotion and their last their last uh, event was this Saturday. I thought it was cool. I've seen it on Damien's um, page. I think it was cool that Alpha Jr. stepped up and said, we're going to keep it going. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Of, what's your thoughts about that? Well, I'm, I'm happy for it. I've never had the privilege to go there or work there or anything. Thing like that, but I know a bunch of guys that went through there. But I mean, it's like I I state to all of these tribalism WWE AEW fans, I'm like, I I want everybody to succeed, and I want every promotion to become good because that's just more places for us boys to work and make money. I mean, why why? Why do you want a company to go under or go out of business? Why? Then you're stuck with one thing, and then you're going to get tired of that and be wishing there was something else. Well, you just wish just something else out of business. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Um, I understand, like, on the indies, they're shitty wrestling. Yes, they're shitty wrestling, but, I mean... I came up through shitty wrestling. It's there. We're never going to get rid of it. I can. I, I mean, I'm one that gets on Facebook and bitches about it every day. But it's <laughs> it's. Uh, I just don't. I don't want anybody to. Get, I mean, unless they're just so badly run, they just don't need to be running. But I, I, I want anybody. everybody to succeed. You know, that's. That's why I'm so passionate about giving out advice because I, I want everybody to get good. I mean, the more better talent we get into business, it's better for guys like me and Christian because now we got better guys to work. So, right. I mean, that's why I'm so passionate about just, you know, passing out advice, trying to help and wanting to be the guy that wants to help. So, I mean, just to... <laughs> Like I said, the more better workers, not wrestlers, but workers that we get in the business, it's just it's better for everybody. Yeah, that, that, yeah okay. that's kind of like where I'm in right now. The position that I'm starting to be in is where I have these younger guys that are coming up, you know, like asking 
me for advice. And for the longest time, like, I feel like, ah, you know, I, I'm not the type that goes and throws, ah, I've been in the business for 20 years, 30 years, like throwing that vet card, you know, but they want to come and ask me for advice. I give them, you know, mostly of my experience and our things. And, uh, yeah, just like Damien said, you know, you, you want everyone to succeed. You want promotions to thrive, build that foundation for all of us. You know, uh, the more work, the better. The You, you want to go out there and work with people that are better than you and you come out with something out of it and make yourself better. Uh, so, yeah, man, uh, it's, it's good to see that they uh, ended up continuing on with that promotion out there because I've been following them on Facebook for a while and uh, I, I've seen that they were planning on closing it down so yeah man I'm, I'm glad that they, they still were running with it Rico? Oh, I was going to say oh, talk about like I don't understand I agree with you Damien I don't understand why people just want one wrestling company you, you want that competitiveness because it brings the best out of everyone it makes people work harder, perform better. Like I, I, I love basketball. I love playing basketball. And I don't like playing against somebody who's not very good. I want to play someone who's better than me. It makes me play better. It makes me work harder. And that's I that's, always looked I, at it like that. Yeah, I've, I've been blessed. I tell guys I've been blessed for over probably 10 to 15 years to be in the position to where when I get booked, I'm usually booked against somebody that's top notch. And that's how I've gotten better over the years is, is everywhere I go, I'm wrestling somebody my caliber or better. And now, now I'm in the position to where I still get those, but I enjoy getting the young guy that I can get in there and lead because I'm not a selfish vet. I'm not worried about my spot. I'm not worried about none of that crap that I can. When I go out to the ring, I'm the last guy on the totem pole. I'm worried about the crowd and I'm worried about my opponent. So if I'm in there with a young guy, I'm capable of teaching him as we are in that ring because I'm not worried about what I'm doing. I'm not worried about any fancy stuff to do. I'm not worried about any of that. My concentration is going to be on getting the crowd involved and helping this kid out. So that's, like you said, man, just that came from being able to wrestle guys. You know, the Bordell Walkers, the you know, just everywhere I went, just guys so good that always brought out the best of me. So that's, like you said, man, that's how you get better. It's, I tell guys, you got to get out of your little pond, get away from your little buddies, because you might wrestle three times a week, what's that, 12 times a month, but I guarantee you 10 out of those 12 times, either in singles, tag, six-man, scrambles, or anything, you're wrestling the same people. And you're never going to get better doing that. Never. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's going to make this match intriguing on Saturday. Because by just by talking to you guys, both have the confidence, both have the, the, the history, the drive. You guys both have that. And that's going to be one heck of a banger of a match. And um, I know Damien's up for it. I know Kristen's up for it. And it's going to be exciting to see you guys just start throwing fists. It's going to be fun. Um, so the fans guarantee, are going to win. And the fans yeah. are going to win. because I and I and The fans are going to win. You've been in the ring with Damien before, so I ain't going to tell you anything that you don't know. But when I know Damien is on the card, I know it's not going to be just in the ring. And I know it's not going to be just outside the ring, beside the ring. It's going to be in the crowd, in the fans, everywhere you go, you're going to have, and it's, and that's what makes it fun. And I'm sure you've been around it. So I know what I know, you know, what's coming. So oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. And it's going to be a banger of a match. You guys both have the, um, the presence and the confidence to make it happen. So I'm excited for Saturday. Um, so, Damien, uh, 
what's the state of XIW? Um, is there is it going good? Um, you're more involved with them than anybody here on the screen. Um, um from what I understand, um, I'm not sure if this high school is going to be our permanent home or if they're looking. I I know they want to be able to continue XIW the way we were, so I, I'm sure they're looking for their own place. Um, I know Larry has gotten really, 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 really slammed with shoot work. So Teddy, Teddy's took an head over. Uh, me and John was kind of working together booking wise, but it just got so confusing with a bunch of stuff. I said, just uh, let me sit yeah. back and, and just wrestle and let y'all handle all that. There you go. Uh, so uh, um, hopefully it's in good good state and uh we'll pick up where we left off last year i think you know, i think last year was we were really making strides and uh, the crowd was growing every show and and uh, it always seems like something wants to bite you in the ass when it starts going good but so hopefully we can pick back up and uh, maybe build a new crowd and, and, and go from there it seems like i talked when i talk about xiw i gotta bring this guy's name up once um, Adrian Whisper. So he retired in December. Do you think he'll be showing his face around there during the during the matches? Do you know Adrian Whisper, um, Christian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're familiar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think I've been in, in more, probably more battles with him than I had Bordell. So I tell you, not not rap battles though, right? <laughs> no. Huh? Was it wasn't he in the rap game years ago? Nah, nah. I mean, he 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 thought he was a rapper. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! I got proof that he was. Hold up. All right. All right. All my dogs. Make some noise. Yeah, I knew you was going to play. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is good. Man, I could write a book about just me and Whisper and the road trips. I bet. I could not imagine the road trips of Adrian and Whisper. I could not. Oh, my God. I don't know how I survived the majority of them. <laughs> I don't know how you're living to tell a tale. How... <laughs> um, but uh, anything from you, Rico, before we go into the Saturday? Well, I just want to bring up, because, uh, Damon, you had mentioned that, uh, because I don't think this guy gets enough credit um, when you brought up Rick Rude. Like, I, I just don't... I don't think whenever we talk about favorite wrestlers, he doesn't get brought up a lot. Man, that guy was incredible. I don't think I, I don't think he gets the credit. Either. Well, I don't think he gets the credit right off the bat. But then when you kind of bring him up, everybody wants to. Oh yeah, Rick Rude's all this. Rick Rude's that. But um, I just thought that the way I look at it is. If you can go in there and make the ultimate warrior look like a million bucks, you're pretty fucking good. Right. <laughs> right. Excuse my language. I'm sorry, but oh. that's that's what made Rick Rude a, a huge fan from uh, me, a huge fan of his. It's just I mean, he just went in there and made that, and then and then what really made me a a fan of Dustin Rhodes was the Rick Rude Dustin Rhodes series in WCW. So, uh, Rude's amazing to me. Great on the mic, everything. And that's what made Dave, that's what made um, Roman Reigns. That's what he did to Cody Rhodes. He made Cody Rhodes look good. That's why Roman Reigns has been the goat, right? <laughs> I, I Roman grew on me because it was like. You know, I saw his FCW stuff, and I was like, why is that not the Roman that we're getting on TV? What is this shield crap, you know? I understand coming out, but once he went on his own, I was like, why? He talks. He's talked so articulate. He wore suits. He wore tight uh, trunks. You know, I mean, he just, I was like, this Roman Reigns is pretty cool. 
and it was heel Roman Reigns. So I, you know, once they let him go heel, that and the way he took control of that character, I was like, yeah, he's just, just I enjoyed just seeing him come out there and talk. I didn't need to see him wrestle. And that's hard for me because it's hard for me to watch anything on TV today. And when you can keep me from changing the channel just by up there what you got to say, then you're doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I have this question down here. Christian, you can go first so because you're not bad at XIW and um this stuff. So if, if there's anything else that you'd like the fans and the promoter like uh, – John Saxon or Adrian Whisper to know about you and your career. How? What are you going to do with that Saturday night to say to them, "Hey, look at me! I'm the future." Well, if they don't already know, oh man, ah, uh, I mean, or what are you going to show the fans so we can like, oh yeah, we want this guy oh, coming back? Well, going back to what we had chatted, I think before we went live was the pronunciation of my name so you know what i can let the fans know is by the end of the night you're gonna know that x-t-i-a-n is pronounced christian and i bring more spice than tony sasters in your kitchen and that's it that's all they need to know so you're gonna bring the spice towards what to damien wayne's and with the punches and all this and the more, spice. more yeah. spice yeah more spice yeah, we got, some, we got some gumbo that's for uh, that or gumbo and jambalaya that Adrian I've Wilson heard about made. that. I, I think that's probably one of the things I'm most excited for is to try his uh gumbo yeah. and see how watered down it is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't lose sight of the title though when you're chasing that guy's gumbo because this uh, guy over to your right, to your right or left, he ain't gonna let you. Take Don't worry, I'll be I, I'll be sitting there eating the gumbo too. So right. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, I know we're got. We, I don't want to take out a lot of your time, guys. Um, Damien, if you had anything else to, like to close the show and tell this young man over here, I know you said you don't have to say much. You just show up and go at it. Come on, Damien, put me over. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you need to tell this young man? <laughs> I don't even uh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> but uh, nah, man. Um, yeah, I, XIW booking for a reason. They must know he can he can bring it. I know he can bring it up in the ring. Um, so I know that real fight shit is going to happen this Saturday night. <laughs> XIW overall, I think it's a loaded show. It's going to be a great show. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can put on, uh, you know, we'll draw a good little crowd there. Uh, I'm not sure how far, how much further it is away from the travel lodge where we normally ran. So, uh, I think it's maybe 30 minutes or so up the road. So, hopefully, we, hopefully we can get the same crowd. We had a nice little base crowd there. Um, surprisingly, a lot of kids for uh, for what our show's about, and uh, but uh, yeah, man, hopefully we'll we'll build off of that and uh, just you know put on a great show. Christian Blake, anything you need to tell Damian Wayne or the fans um, before we close the show? Uh, this is your first appearance at um, XIW, and um. Like Damien said, the kids are there, the, the people are there, they're rowdy. Um, yeah. I think that's the most thing uh, that I'm looking forward to is just to feel the atmosphere, especially over there, especially what they've been doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see some familiar faces, uh, new faces. Uh, just ready to have a good old time. Absolutely. Good old slobber knocker. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Ross would a say. Little, a little snug. Oh, classic JR, man. It's not going to be anything less than that. I can tell you that. I've Again, I've been through enough of the Damian Wayne's fights. So, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, 
I know you got your stuff, man. I, Blake, I know you got your stuff. I know you're going to bring your A game. Um, and I'm not trying to be a super fan of Damian Wayne. The matter is, sometimes I I'm, I root for I root against him, but I it's real fight shit when you got this guy in the crowd in the um in the ring. And uh, I know you're prepared for it. You were up against him before. Um, and I can't wait to see you on Saturday. I will definitely stop by your merch table and uh, get a, a little autograph with you. Um, stop by the podcast setup. Um, Damien, stop oh, yeah. by the podcast setup uh, anytime during the night. Um, I'll be I'll, there. I'll, 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 uh, I'll introduce you to Christian Blake up close and personal. There you go. I was just going to ask somebody to do that. And I'll I was be just going to ask somebody to do uh, that. And I'll be ready with my other camera to clip that, <laughs> put it on TikTok, it. and write that's ass it. beaten. <laughs> I just want to know, man, are you sure you're ready for this, Christian? Yeah. Man, he, he's like just throwing you out there, Christian. <laughs> I know, man. I know, right? <laughs> I'm concerned, I guess, man. I, I guess expect we just, we just to show him, huh, Chris? <laughs> I guess so. Hey, I guess Chris, so. I, I'm thinking huge pop may need a suplex. No. I think so. I think so. It's <laughs> no. hey, it's, Scott, it's working up make, on that. Scott, I'm gonna make the hot tag to you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Show me, come show me that fire. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna get involved now. <laughs> give me one hell of a smack. One well, hell of a smack. That's it. So that's one question I gotta ask. We smack. I, Damian Wayne can hit like a son of a gun. Who who do you think I'll have the biggest chop? You or Damian Wayne, Christian? Ooh. Uh I don't know. Uh I've been known to throw some hot ones, so We'll, we'll just have to wait and see then, I guess. How about you, Damon? You think you got a better chop? I got a better everything, but. Oh, oh. that's just a perfect <laughs> answer. I'm sorry, Christian. That was a perfect answer. What? <laughs> it's been fun, don't, guys. It's, uh... Don't you know who the hell I am, Scott? I know who the hell you are. And that's why I'm afraid on Saturday night. If you're gonna hot tag me, and I'm gonna look at you like what? <laughs> hey, please do. They don't call please me unpredictable do. for nothing. That's right. You know? <laughs> so, but, uh, anyway, guys, uh, for for those who can't be in Florida, how can they watch the show? You can watch the show. I Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast will have it streaming live on their YouTube channel and their Facebook channel. Um, so we'll be there. An hour before the setup, before the um, before the event happens, so there'll be feed coming in and out, wrestlers coming in and out, um, and then we'll be there for showtime. So tune into Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast for April twentieth, uh, seven thirty about seven o'clock bell time. No, uh, I think seven thirty. I think it's early. Is it? Oh, no, early. no, no. It's five. It Four thirty. Yeah. Was it? Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five, okay. yeah. five. Five thirty bell time. So that'd be 6.30 your time, Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, get on uh, Facebook Live, uh, the Facebook, uh, Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast Facebook page, and it'll be right there. Where are you at, Rico? In East Tennessee, right by Gatlinburg. Oh, okay. Got you. Now I'm in with, Clarksville. Now, you're with Thunder Championship Wrestling up there, right? Is that where that is? Or no, it's, um, it's you, were, you were with a promotion up there, weren't you, David? Where? Up in Tennessee. I you live like, in Clarksville, Tennessee. But you were like, weren't you like a booker or something? Uh, oh, I was booking for this little company around the corner here. And they're a bunch yeah. of goose, so I told them, uh, <laughs> no more. All right. <laughs> I don't want their parts of that crap. Right. <laughs> Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast fan. It's uh, Damian Wayne and um, Christian Blake. They are going face to face at the XIW Extreme Impact Wrestling event April 20th at the uh, high school there in Panama City Beach, Florida. Um, real fight shit is their title for is their hashtag for a reason because it's gonna be real fight shit, especially with these two at the bottom. So it's exciting Don't stuff. Every, they bring it, everybody wants to watch it again. If you can't make it to Panama City Beach, tune it in at 6 30 Eastern, 5 30 Central. 
at the Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast. We will be live on site to talk to the wrestlers and, talk and just enjoy a good time. And who knows, you might see Huge Pop get a hot tap tag and have to give somebody a chop. And then I'll be ducking out because I'm not going to get my ass beat, okay? Oh, no, he's going to get a chop himself. <laughs> I did not sign up for that. So. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, don't go anywhere. I'm going to play a song. You'll love this song. It's my closing. But um, Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast, thank you guys for uh, watching, and um, I'll talk to you guys in a minute. All my dogs, make some noise up in this house. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Cause when your body hits the canvas, then your head is knocked out. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Cause when your body hits the canvas, then your head is knocked out. Fight with Adrian Whisper is like a fight with the devil. Because when he didn't with you, you cannot get on this level. Fight with Adrian Whisper's like like a fight with a king, it's like a fight with an army, they got the tanks and everything. He's leaving bruises and stitches, possibly leaving you crippled, cause when he sets up the table and sends you straight through the middle. Take the district free, beat that ass with a light bulb, leave a piece of glass embedded in the back of your skull. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know it's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Cause when your body hits the canvas, then your ass is knocked out. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know it's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Cause when your body hits the canvas, then your ass is knocked out.